let's talk again about credential stuffing. And while we're at it, we're gonna talk about password spraying. Now I realize we talked about this earlier in the course with breach parse and we leak info, but I do think that hammering concepts over and over and how important they are does help for information retention. So again, if we look at this example here, what is credential stuffing? Well, it's just injecting breach account credentials in hopes of account takeover. So if you look at the compromised server here in the upper right hand corner, we pull down usernames and credentials. And we get these from leaks like the LinkedIn link or the Equifax link or whatever of those have come out recently. We get these leaked credentials and we grab these databases. We search through them like we did with breach parse or like we can with we leak info and we get these stolen credentials and we take these credentials and we try to pass them to the site login. Now we could take a look at a real life example of that, which I have pulled up here. And again, this is just an example of the Tesla breach parse. So we have some usernames and passwords. We have repeat offenders. Remember, we also have similar passwords here. But the art of credential stuffing is taking these passwords and these usernames and throwing them at a website. That's all it is. So we're going to throw them at a website and just kind of spray and pray. Now, I just gone ahead and opened up this same Tesla dash master. I've only opened up the users and the passwords just for an example of spraying. This video is going to be in theory only. I don't want you attacking Tesla's website. So just take this for example, you can follow all the way up until the point that we actually hit attack if you want to follow along. But for this, please do not attempt an exploit against Tesla. You do not know when the uh, criteria is going to change and I just don't want you getting in trouble just in case it does. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and go to Firefox. And while we are in Firefox, what I want to do is I want to take a quick pit stop and go to Google. And I want to look up something called Foxy Proxy. So go ahead and do this. Look up Foxy Proxy like this, not Froxy, Foxy Proxy. And go ahead and click on this top one here, the standard. And we're just going to go ahead and install the standard to our Firefox. And this is going to be a useful tool that we'll be using throughout the course. So, okay, we've got Foxy Proxy installed. Now what has happened up in the right hand corner, we've got this here. You can see Foxy Proxy's here and we can just say, hey, options. And in the options, we're gonna add in a proxy over here on the left. And we're just gonna call it Burp Suite. And then over here, we've got proxy types. We're just gonna leave this at HTTP. And then we're going to give it an address, which is 127.0.0.1. Same thing as before. And again, this is 8080. We'll just hit save. And then we're going to go ahead and close out. And then all we got to do now is click this and click this. And now Burp Suite's turned on. Super simple. So let's go ahead also to our applications. And let's just go up here and open up Burp Suite. And let's test out our proxy and make sure. Ignore the errors, don't worry about those. We'll just go ahead and hit next and use burp defaults. And I will give you a second here to catch up because I realize that I might be clicking through a little fast. So once you have everything set up like this, what we're gonna do is we're just going to make sure our proxy works. So I'm just gonna refresh the page and you can see that it worked. So easy on, easy off. That's all we're looking for here. Instead of having to go in the menu and go to preferences and, you know, go through that whole process, all we got to do is click a little button. We can turn it on or off within a couple clicks. So from here, I'm going to turn the intercept off and we're just going to go ahead and go to tesla.com. And Tesla should look like this when you go to it. In the upper right hand corner, there is a sign in button. Go ahead and click sign in. And again, this is just a watch and learn exercise. You can follow along up until the point that we fire the attack. There will be opportunities here in very, very soon videos where you actually get to do this and you can practice along. So from here, let's turn on the intercept and let's go ahead and just put a fake email. We'll just do test at tests.com and we'll do test as the password and hit sign in. And that intercepts here. 
So you can see the user equals or email equals test at test.com and password equals test. We're going to go ahead and just right click this and say send to intruder. And from intruder, what we're going to do is we're going to go to positions in here. And then we're going to clear it. All those green go away because it tries to auto select positions for us. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to highlight this here. And we're going to say add. And then we're going to highlight this here and we're going to say add. So we're selecting two different parameters. We're selecting the email parameter and we're selecting the password parameter. And now we have different attack types up here. The most common that we're going to use is either sniper, but sniper uses one parameter. So we're actually going to use what is called a pitchfork here. And we're going to go ahead and go over to our payloads. And what we're going to do or what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this list of users and I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it. And then on the second one, I'm going to take my list of passwords and I'm going to paste it. Now, what this is doing, if we go back, payload set one is all the usernames. It's going into the first one we set here. Payload set two, all the passwords, those are all going into here and we have 30 total counts, meaning what's happening with this, this pitchfork is payload one, number one is corresponding to payload two, number one. So they only run together. So this will run the username and password. These are just the separated users and passwords. This will run this username against or against this password here. So what we're going to do is just, we start an attack and it just says, Hey, this is a, demo version of intruder because you're on community. Don't worry about that. It still runs. It's just a little slower. I'm going to go ahead and hit pause on the attack. Now there are some interesting things that we can look for when we're doing this. What we're looking for is a status code change of some sort. Maybe we see 200s here and we want like a 301, which means a redirect or we see a significant change in length. That would be a good indicator that maybe we had a successful login. Other items too is that we can click in here and look at the response and we can say, okay, what did the response say? And if we scroll down, maybe it said something in here about fail login. Okay. We could not sign you in and we could just take, we could not sign you in like this, copy this. And then we can come back. We'll close this attack. We'll come into options here and there's actually a grep feature so we can remove, we can clear all these in this little box and we can just paste this and say, yes, match, match this here. So watch what this does. So we're going to start this attack again, and then I'm going to pause it and you can know immediately look at the check boxes. This means it's showing up in the response. It's grepping it out. It knows immediately that we didn't sign in successfully. So this is an example of a credential stuffing attack. So we're looking for these few different things, a status change, a significant length, like we're seeing all the same kind of lengths here, but what if it was like 5,000 or 2,000 or 15,000? If the page length changes, there's a good chance that you signed into something and we have a successful login. Same thing here with this. If you can find your error code or what it says and then grep on that, then you can click up here and just sort by that. And you can search for the ones that don't return that and possibly you have a login as well. So this is the art of credential stuffing. Now, Let's say we wanted to close this out. We want to go back and we want to do password spraying. Well, we're going to go ahead and just clear this out. And if you remember, password spraying is the art of using known usernames without a known password. So we'll just say add here and we would gather a list of all the possible users that we can think of. We can look at hunter.io. We can look at, you know, the breach password list. We can look at LinkedIn and gather people who work there, come up with this big list and then actually clear, sorry. Um, no, this is right. We'll add these and we'll have all the different users. And then for this, we'll just change the request to like fall of 2019, or we can set it up to, we could set this up here, like fall 2019 exclamation or whatever the time frame is or however you want, or maybe, you know, they work at Tesla. So maybe we'll do Tesla one, if they have a weak password policy or one, two, three, or at sign or pound, you just try a few of these. The only downside to this is 
you are most likely attacking Active Directory accounts. When you're attacking Active Directory accounts, you want to be very careful because you could lock them out without even trying. So if you're doing a pen test, the best idea is to ask before you attack, say, hey, how many attempts do you have unsuccessfully before a logout happens or a lockout happens? Because the worst thing you want to do is fire off 10 of these in a row, lock out a bunch of users and cause a denial of service. That is very, very possible and very, very easy to do. So make sure you're not just firing these willy nilly, that you have a good idea of the password policy, the lockout policy, et cetera. That'll really help you when you do these attacks. But you just want to do these kind of one or two at a time, wait a few hours, fire another one or two at a time, and you should be good to go. OK, so same deal here. We could fire this and we could just say, you know, I'll just say password one, two, three. And we'll just switch this to sniper here. And if we come to the payloads, you can see it just kept the emails. There is no payload two anymore. So what this would do if we hit start attack is it would start firing this against this email address with the password of one, two, three. And then this one with this email address with the password of one, two, three, it would just go down the list. And that's all password spraying is. But the feature that I'm showing you here between credential stuffing and password spraying is by far the most common way that we get in on external assessments. Way, way more than you're ever going to see just an exploit out in the wild where you're going to see this most likely. And second, you're probably going to see something like default credentials. So if you see a login page, always check default credentials because you never know. You're likely not going to see a exploit out there because the chances are one is that if you see an exploit like that out there, who knows who else has seen that already? What kind of bad actors? Because bad actors are scanning the internet all the time for these sorts of things. And if they're seeing it, then guess what? You know, or if you're seeing it, then guess what? They're probably have already seen it as well. So that's a, a bad situation Two, you got to think of protection and clients. Just think of clients like a house. When you talk about the external of your house, your external, your doors have really good locks on them. You might have two locks on your door. You might have good lighting, all this other stuff, right? Like to try to keep bad guys out. But on the inside, some of your doors probably don't even lock. And that's really how you can treat an external assessment. The clients do a really good job of, you know, buffening up their external. But when it comes to the internal, it's not usually as good. So same thing with physical assessments as well. You just got to you got to get inside. Once you're inside, it's kind of easy breezy for the most part. So take that lesson away. If anything you take from the course, again, at least for the external side, take away that enumeration and information gathering super important because you want to get to this stage here where you are doing these credential stuffing attacks and you can use Burp Suite for it. This is my favorite go to. There's other methods as well, but it's so easy just to grab any different website and just, you know, intercept the proxy, send it to intruder, make one modification and fire it off. So super, super simple. This is something you will come up in an interview as well. So make sure you're very aware of it and make sure you watch this again if you need to understand the concepts. So from here, we're going to go ahead and take uh, a quick look at our notes in the next video, just kind of where I want you to be with your notes. And then we're going to get into what I call that mid course capstone, where I'm going to show you a bunch of different hacks and just my thought process and theories and thinking when I go into a scan and looking at results. And just so you can kind of get into the mind of an attacker and how we think. And then we'll start moving on to exploit development and my favorite, the active directory exploitation. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video.